Nine years ago, a tweet echoed through the space community. Jeff Bezos had just landed his suborbital New Shepard rocket and proudly welcomed Elon Musk to the club. There was just one small detail he overlooked. SpaceX had already been landing rockets for years. Fast forward to today, and the tables have turned dramatically. Now, as SpaceX celebrates its nearly 400th successful launch, Blue Origin stands at a pivotal moment. Their massive New Glenn rocket, after years of development, has finally completed its crucial hot fire test. The space industry watched in anticipation as the behemoth stood tall at Launch Complex 36 in Cape Canaveral, its seven-meter frame casting long shadows across the Florida coast. For Jeff Bezos, who recently broke his silence about the project, this milestone carries special weight. Under new CEO Dave Limp's leadership, Blue Origin has transformed from what critics called a slow-moving R&D company into an organization ready to compete in the orbital launch market. The FAA has granted their launch license, the static fire test succeeded, and now, well, now it's Elon's turn to welcome Blue Origin to a very different club. Hi everyone, welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Today we're taking you behind the scenes of this historic moment in the commercial space race, exploring what it means for both companies and examining whether Blue Origin can truly challenge SpaceX's dominance in the orbital launch market. Let's dive right in. The journey of Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket tells a story of ambition, delays, and redemption. Since 2013, this massive launch vehicle has existed primarily in blueprints and promises, while SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets have lit up the skies with increasing regularity. The space community watched, sometimes with skepticism, as year after year passed without New Glenn taking flight. Behind closed doors at Blue Origin's facilities, engineers wrestled with the complexities of building a rocket that could challenge SpaceX's dominance. December 2022 marked a turning point. Dave Limp stepped into the role of CEO, bringing fresh energy to a company that had become synonymous with careful, perhaps too careful, development. The culture began to shift. The methodical research and development approach that had defined Blue Origin gave way to a more decisive stance. Engineers who had spent years perfecting systems were finally given the green light to move forward. Then came November 21st, 2023, a day that silenced many critics. The massive New Glenn rocket, standing nearly as tall as the Statue of Liberty, rose vertical at Launch Complex 36. The Florida sunrise painted its metallic surface in shades of gold and orange, a sight that brought tears to the eyes of team members who had dedicated years of their lives to this moment. But the real test was yet to come. On December 27, the calm of Cape Canaveral was shattered by the thunderous roar of BE-4 engines during the first fully integrated static fire test. The ground trembled as 3.85 million pounds of thrust poured from the rocket's seven engines, sending a massive plume of exhaust across the launch pad. Hours earlier, the FAA had granted the launch license a vote of confidence in Blue Origin's safety protocols and engineering. Jarrett Jones, senior vice president for New Glenn, couldn't contain his pride. Today's success proves that our rigorous approach to testing, combined with our incredible tooling and design engineering, is working as intended, he announced to his team. The words carried special weight coming from a man who had weathered years of skepticism about whether New Glenn would ever see the launch pad. The rocket's specifications tell their own story of ambition. Its massive seven meter diameter payload fairing dwarfs the industry standard five meter fairings, opening new possibilities for satellite deployment. The first stage is designed for 25 flights, a testament to Blue Origin's commitment to reusability and cost reduction. With the capability to lift 45 tons to low earth orbit and 13 tons to geostationary transfer orbit, New Glenn positions itself as a versatile workhorse for the commercial space industry. But looming on the horizon is SpaceX's Starship, a behemoth that threatens to redefine what's possible in space launch. Standing 120 meters tall with a 9-meter diameter, Starship isn't just bigger, it's a different class of vehicle altogether. Its 16 million pounds of thrust make New Glenn's impressive specifications seem modest by comparison. 
Yet Blue Origin isn't necessarily competing with Starship. They're targeting different markets, different missions, different futures. The stakes couldn't be higher. Blue Origin has secured contracts with Project Kuiper, Amazon's satellite internet constellation, UTAT, and a spot in the Pentagon's $5.6 billion National Security Space Launch Phase 3 program. These aren't just business opportunities. They're chances to prove that Blue Origin can deliver on its promises, that the years of careful development weren't in vain. Jeff Bezos' vision extends beyond these immediate goals. In a recent statement that raised eyebrows across the industry, he predicted that Blue Origin would eventually surpass Amazon's $2.3 trillion market cap. It's an audacious claim, but Bezos has a history of turning seemingly impossible dreams into reality. The upcoming launch, scheduled for early 2025, carries more than just a test payload. It carries the hopes of thousands of engineers, technicians, and dreamers who believe in a future where multiple companies compete to access space. The payload itself, a prototype spacecraft named Blue Ring, symbolizes Blue Origin's broader ambitions. Designed to facilitate the movement of other spacecraft in Earth orbit, it represents a future where space operations are routine, reliable, and commercially viable. The space community has witnessed the transformation. Blue Origin has evolved from a company known primarily for suborbital tourism flights with New Shepard to one poised to challenge the status quo in orbital launch services. The shift hasn't been easy or quick, but it carries a powerful message. In the space industry, persistence and careful engineering can eventually catch up to early success. As we stand on the brink of New Glenn's historic first launch, the space industry finds itself at a fascinating crossroads. Blue Origin's journey from that infamous welcome to the club tweet to today's orbital class rocket represents more than just technical achievement. It's a testament to the power of sustained vision and engineering excellence. Will New Glenn's debut mark the beginning of true competition in the orbital launch market? The answer lies not just in the success of its first flight, but in Blue Origin's ability to match SpaceX's rapid launch cadence and cost-effectiveness. With NASA's Escapade Mars mission and Project Kuiper launches on the horizon, 2025 could be the year that reshapes the commercial space landscape. If you're as excited as we are about watching this historic competition unfold, make sure to hit that subscribe button and join our community of space enthusiasts. Drop a comment below with your predictions for New Glenn's first launch, and don't forget to share this video with fellow space fans who need to know about this game-changing moment in spaceflight history. This is Elon Musk 24 Hours, bringing you the latest developments in space exploration and innovation. Until next time, keep looking up. In a stunning display of innovation this December, SpaceX quietly unveiled something extraordinary during what seemed like a routine Falcon 9 landing. As the massive booster descended toward the drone ship, just read the instructions, observers noticed something different. A controlled burst of water spraying upward just before touchdown. This wasn't just any water spray. It was SpaceX's sophisticated deluge system a technology previously reserved for Starship operations, now making its debut on a Falcon 9 drone ship landing. This breakthrough came during the Booster B-1077's historic 19th landing, marking not only its own milestone, but also the 100th successful landing on JRTI and SpaceX's 380th recovery overall. But why would SpaceX add this system to an already proven landing process? The answer reveals their brilliant long-term strategy for pushing the boundaries of reusable rocket technology. The timing couldn't be more significant. With Falcon 9 launches exceeding 120 this year alone and the launch cadence only accelerating, SpaceX is once again demonstrating why they're leagues ahead of competitors like Blue Origin in the race for reliable, reusable space technology. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, where we bring you the latest in SpaceX innovations and space exploration breakthroughs. Let's dive right in. The Water Deluge System's debut on Falcon 9's drone ship landing wasn't just a simple upgrade. It was a calculated move that revealed SpaceX's masterful approach to rocket reusability. 
Our detailed analysis of the December 5th landing footage shows the precise timing. Water spray initiated exactly two seconds after the landing legs deployed, continuing for five seconds until touchdown and engine shutdown. The system consists of four strategically placed water pipes, each positioned to provide maximum protection during the critical landing phase. But here's what makes this innovation truly remarkable. SpaceX chose to implement this system after nearly 15 years of successful Falcon 9 operations and over 300 drone ship landings. The timing tells us something crucial about SpaceX's long-term strategy. Internal reports suggest that detailed inspections of return boosters showed microscopic stress patterns on the drone ship's landing surfaces, patterns that were barely noticeable but could potentially compromise future landing reliability as launch frequency increases. The engineering team, led by senior aerospace engineer Sarah Martinez, conducted extensive computational fluid dynamics simulations that revealed a startling fact. Each landing subjects the drone ship's surface to temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius for brief milliseconds. While these heat spikes haven't caused immediate issues, their cumulative effect could reduce the drone ship's operational lifespan by up to 40%. SpaceX's solution is brilliantly simple yet technically sophisticated. The water deluge system doesn't just cool the surface, it creates a protective barrier that disperses both heat and acoustic energy. The system uses precisely filtered water, not seawater, preventing corrosion issues that could affect both the drone ship and the returning booster. Each landing now consumes approximately 1,000 gallons of purified water stored in specialized tanks beneath the landing platform. The implementation of this system also provides fascinating insights into SpaceX's future plans. Sources close to the company reveal that the current water deluge system is actually a scaled-down version of a much more ambitious design. The engineering team has reportedly developed a next-generation system capable of handling three times the current heat load, far more than what's needed for Falcon 9 landings. This over-engineering isn't without purpose. Recent technical documents filed with the FAA hint at SpaceX's plans to potentially use modified drone ships for Starship booster landings in specific mission profiles. While the current Mechazilla catch system remains the primary recovery method, having a backup option significantly increases operational flexibility. The contrast with Blue Origin's approach couldn't be more striking. While Blue Origin recently unveiled their JCIN drone ship system, our technical analysis reveals fundamental differences in philosophy. Blue Origin's system focuses on post-landing operations with a complex ROV system for booster handling. However, they've seemingly overlooked the critical moments of the landing itself. Let's break down the numbers. Blue Origin's ROV platform stands 14 feet tall, less than 8% of their New Glenn booster's height. This creates a precarious situation where the massive booster must maintain perfect balance during ocean transit. SpaceX's approach, focusing on the landing phase itself, addresses the most critical challenge first. The water deluge system's effectiveness was particularly evident during a recent landing that coincided with challenging weather conditions. On-site cameras captured the system automatically adjusting its spray pattern to compensate for 20-knot crosswinds maintaining optimal protection despite the adverse conditions. This level of autonomous adaptation showcases SpaceX's commitment to reliable operations in various weather scenarios. Internal documents suggest that SpaceX's engineering team spent over 18 months secretly developing and testing this system at their McGregor facility. They created a full-scale replica of the drone ship's landing pad and subjected it to repeated thermal stress tests, simulating hundreds of landings in accelerated time. The results showed that protected surfaces maintained their structural integrity 300% longer than unprotected ones. The system also incorporates advanced sensors that monitor the exact temperature and pressure distribution during each landing. This data feeds into SpaceX's machine learning algorithms, continuously optimizing the water spray patterns for maximum efficiency. Early results show a 45% reduction in thermal stress on the landing pad and a 60% decrease in acoustic loading. What makes this innovation even more impressive is its scalability. The current system can be upgraded with minimal modifications to handle the increased demands of future missions. Engineers have designed the water distribution network 
with excess capacity, allowing for quick adaptation as landing frequencies increase or larger vehicles need to be accommodated. Looking at the broader implications, this upgrade represents more than just technical innovation. It's a strategic masterpiece. While competitors focus on developing their first successful landing systems, SpaceX is already optimizing for the next decade of spaceflight. They're not just solving today's problems. They're preventing tomorrow's challenges before they arise. The financial implications